Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. This is a guide for you to complete the Alpha Omega Easter Egg. I'd recommend going into this game with Undead Man walking and shopping free potentially, but if you don't have them, it's not the end of the world. You're going to start off by turning on the power like you would do in any other game and activating the Pack-a-Punch. I'm going to assume that you already know how to turn on the power and activate the pap, but if you don't, here's a 10 second recap. Power is in the garage scene here, and the Pack-a-Punch requires that you complete a lockdown in the bunker, followed by activating four machines above ground near the houses which are smoking with green gas. It's in the description down below, but I'm assuming that all of you probably already know how to pack on the map. Once you've activated Pack-a-Punch, you need to flip the round, and you'll then hear Rushmore, the facility's AI. Rushmore is going to be interacted with throughout this easter egg by going up to the green panels that are inside this area here, operations, and holding square. There are four codes needed for this part of the easter egg. One of the codes always appears to be the same, it's 7626 and can be found on a folder just across from Rushmore itself. The second code requires that you find yourself a key which is in a box on a wall opposite the base of the APD. It's very similar to the key in Classified if you're familiar with that. Grab the key and then head up to the top floor of the yellow house and you'll find that you can open the drawer and inside you'll get a sheet of paper with a name on it, which is important, and also a number. Make a note of both of these. A third code can be found in one of three locations. The first possible spawn for it is going to be just here. They're all in this general area, but the first one is just here on this kind of counter. The second possible spawn is going to be on the kind of inside here, just before we go up the staircase. And the third possible spawn is going to be up the staircase, so head up there, and it will be again across the room and on this kind of counter. You'll once again get a number, it'll be a four digit number and a name. Then our fourth and final four digit code can be found near the base of the APD once again, and you're going to want to look for a stack of papers to shoot, and it will be underneath that stack of papers that you find your code and your name. With these four names and numbers, we need to go over to Rushmore and input the Toy Soldier, also known as the 7626 code. Each time to type in the numbers on the numpad, you just need to hold square over the number that you want to select, and then when the full number is inputted, you hit the enter button, again, just by holding square. With that out of the way, Rushmore will then ask you for the next code, and you need to make sure that when Rushmore asks for a certain name's code, you give the correct numbers. This will happen three times, for Purnell, for Sawyer, and for McCain. This is also on a bit of a time limit, so make sure you don't dilly-dally too much. Then when that's done, the next best step for you to do would be to buy yourself Galvanuckles. They're exceedingly useful throughout this easter egg, and we'll be using them for this next step. Galvas can be found inside the red truck near the yellow bus in the main Nuketown above ground area. The bunker of the map contains several televisions. Find the TV that has the lit up screen as you can see in this example gameplay here. I'll show you four possible spawn locations for this TV. If there are any extras, then I'll list them in the description down below. The first TV, as you can see, is the one that I've already got lit up. The second TV is going to be just here. You can see that this one does not have anything on its screen, but it's the same design. And the third TV is going to be, again, in a very similar area in the bunker, but once again, without a lit up screen. It's just the same model of TV. So find the one that has the lit up screen and go over to it. You're going to use your Galvanuckles to melee a zombie near the TV, and that is going to cause a broadcast to play. For this, you probably want to keep a pen and paper handy. Write down basically everything that the voice says, both the letters and the numbers, and you're going to want to make sure that you keep them in order. When the voice is finished talking and you've written it all down, you're going to want to head back above ground. The letters that the voice gave you correspond to different houses in the area. I'll have a key on the screen right now so you can see which which house is which in my gameplay. The first thing that my voice said was F0930, and what this corresponds to in our game is the F house and then 0930 for 930. This is going to be a time that we input onto the clock that can be found on the wall within the F house. With that done, you'll get a confirmation sound from the voice telling you that you've had your access granted or something like that. And then you'll be moving on to whichever letter house your voice gave you next. So in my case, it was C1015. So I'm going to go over to the C house. This is where the clock is in the C house. And I'm going to put in 1015. Then the next one that I've got once I get that voice confirmation is D. So I'm going to go over to the D house. I've got 815. I'm going to input that, get a confirmation from the voice and repeat. 
We're going to go to the E house. This is where the clock is in the E house. My time is 1130. I'm going to input that time. It's going to give me a confirmation. And then finally, we're going to go to the B house and enter the time of 445 on the clock, which can be found just here. The last remaining house, once you've hit the previous five, is going to also contain a clock. But for this one, you don't have a time. The broadcast system didn't say any. So you're just going to hit the clock with your Galva knuckles and the clock should spin around. At this point, don't just run away. Look at what the clock lands on. In my game, I get the time at 3 o'clock, which would be 0300 if you read it on a digital clock. You're not going to want to read this as 0312. That's an important distinction to make. So 0300 is the final time that I get here, and I'm going to go and input that code into Rushmore. At this point, you'll get a free Raygun Mark II Pack-A-Punched, which is an awesome thing to just get for basically doing nothing. And also, each player in your game will get a free Pack-A-Punched weapon out of this locker. Once you've grabbed those, go back to Rushmore and hold square to access Rushmore. You'll be told about a Nova Crawler somewhere on the map. You're going to want to head down to the generators area, and you should be able to hear and then see a red glowing Nova Crawler. This crawler will follow you, so try not to kill it, and you need to bring it all the way to the transfusion area, which is near the APD, it's the adjacent house. The crawler, when it heads in here, is going to basically climb through a zombie barrier and then leave, so lead it all the way into the house and then just let it walk around, and it should walk through that zombie barrier. If you're having any trouble with this, then again, as I do with all my guides, guys, I will have help in the description down below. With the red crawler gone, you're going to want to go and talk to Rushmore once again. Rushmore will tell you that there's more that you need to do, and with Rushmore's quote out of the way, you can head over to the diner, and on the way down the stairs from the green and white house, you're going to see a metal door. If you melee that door, you'll see that Malton is behind it. And if you melee it a few times, Rushmore will say, actually, you need to get something out of there. To do that, we're going to go and get Adam. Adam is basically the civil protector. It's going to be hanging around in the storage area of the map. Your first use of it will be free. And so I'd recommend trying to avoid using it until this point in your game. And after that, it will cost 3000 points to call in each time. Adam, when called in, will follow you around. And so you just need to walk Adam all the way over to where Malton is behind the metal door. You should get a quote saying Adam in the AO when it gets there. Then you'll find that Malton will chuck a canister out of the room. If he needs a little bit more coaxing, make sure that Adam has actually given his quote and maybe knife the door a little bit as well. When the canister is on the floor, you can hold square to pick it up and you then need to place it on the shelf back in the transfusions room that we were in previously. Then just like before, we're going to head back to Rushmore and access Rushmore once again. This next step requires you to have a jumping jack, which is electrified, hit a fuse box near the power switch with one of its kind of electric beams. I've heard people saying that this also works better if you just kill the jumping jack near it, but I think having the jumping jack actually shoot the box is the way to go. This is kind of similar to that one ancient evil easter egg step. Once an electric jumping jack has shocked the box or died and shocked it, if that's true that that actually works, you'll get a quote saying that you basically need to make sure that the fuse doesn't get too hot. The trick to this is rather than grabbing the fuse and trying to do a whole load of stuff with it on foot, you're going to teleport to where you need to get to. In order to do that, we obviously need to build the teleporter. There are nine teleporter parts, and I'm going to run through them all now very quickly. The first can be found in the transfusion area just here inside a kind of crate or locker. The second is just around the corner by the operating chair. And then the third is just outside the back of this room. And it's basically on the back of this kind of area here. The second part is going to be located in the green and white house. The first one I'll show you is right here, as you can see. The second one that I'm going to be showing you is just in the corner here on the ground floor. And then the third one I'll show you is is upper level and you can find it just here. The third part is located in the bunker. Come to the area that I'm standing in right now and you can orient yourself by looking for this perk machine. Opposite that perk machine is where you'll find the first part spawn. The second possible spawn is going to be just here, kind of nestled against these crates. And the third possible spawn is going to be against this wall on the right hand side. With three teleporter parts picked up, you can build the teleporter either downstairs by the APD 
or upstairs in the green and white house. I recommend the green and white house because it's better, in my opinion, to build the shield downstairs by the APD. Then, with teleporter built, grab it and place one teleporter pad right next to the fuse that we just opened up a moment ago with the jumping jack. Then, the second teleporter pad needs to go in the back kind of area where Rushmore is, in the backyard kind of area. The reason for this is that what we're going to do is go back to that fuse box that we just opened and we're going to grab the fuse. You then have a very limited amount of time to teleport straight away, find yourself in this area behind Rushmore and then run basically through the little walkway here and place the fuse that you've picked up inside Rushmore's little fuse box on the wall. I always buy stamina up to do this, but I'm kind of a sucker for stamina up, so that's really no surprise. The timing is very fiddly, so you may need to try this a couple times. Make sure I would say that when you get out of the teleporter, you run left around the bench instead of right around the bench. I think you save a little bit of time doing that. And with a couple of attempts, you should be able to get this, guys. If you fail, of course, you can just go back and grab the fuse once again, but you'll need to wait for your teleporters to cool down. The next thing to do after that is to find three kind of green smoky posters around the map. There are two of these down in the bunker and one of them is going to be upstairs in the green and white house. Here's what it looks like and we'll be interacting with these posters using brain rot which is an alternate ammo type for your pack-a-punch guns or rather your double pack-a-punch guns. So make use of the fact that you opened pack-a-punch earlier on in your game, pack a weapon or get one from the locker like I said before and then repack it until you get brain rot. Then go up to one of these smoky posters and turn a zombie in front of it. The turned zombie should rip down the poster and behind it you'll find a code. Make a note of the code when you get it and then move on to the next poster. That was the first poster, let's show you the second poster now, this one's going to be downstairs. The brain rotted zombie once again is just going to rip it off the wall and you'll then get a code behind it and we'll make another note of that. And then finally our third poster is going to be just here and by the way these are very easy to hear so if you're struggling to find them for whatever reason just listen out for them and that should really help guide you. Anyway, this is the third one. Turn zombie, rips it down, bish bash bosh, you have three codes. You can now head back to Rushmore and enter those three codes. I believe you can do these in any order, but if not, then trial and error won't hurt. After these have been entered into Rushmore and remember to hit the enter button after each one, you'll then need to wait a second and then access Rushmore to start talking about core value number four. This is the point where power is going to be lost from the entire facility and you're going to need to bring it back by interacting with six switch boxes around the map. I'm going to run you through all of the locations for these switch boxes and the positions that you need to switch the switches to. It looks a bit complicated, but Trust me, it's actually very easy. It's basically like the Origins dials. It's the same every time. The first one we'll take a look at is in the diner just here. This one's going to be set to the up position. So if it's down, just set it to up and don't worry what the lights are showing. Then run through the diner into the beds area and you'll find your second box. This beds box needs to also be switched to the up position. From here, we're going to head towards the storage Storage is one that needs to be set down and then double back on yourself back to the beds room and head into the generators area. The generators switch, which you can see just here, needs to be set to up. So switch that and then head towards the lounge. The lounge switch needs to be set to down. So switch it down again. Don't worry too much about the lights. They'll all fall into place nice and soon. And finally, we're going to head towards solitary. This one needs to also be set down. And if you followed my instructions, instructions here, you should find that all the lights are green. This will also be accompanied by your character saying something like, wow, I'm awesome or something like that. Then with that done, go and flick the power switch back on. That's where the original power switch was right at the beginning of the game. And then with that done, go and access Rushmore once more. This next step contains three mannequin lockdowns, which are dotted around the map. You're going to be looking for a mannequin with a blue glow around its chest, and you'll also be able to hear it once again from a distance. The mannequins can be activated by holding square on them when your team are all in that area and a lockdown will begin, lasting about 30 seconds, they're not very difficult, and with the lockdown completed, you'll find that the mannequin explodes and a part of its body will drop onto the floor. The first part is an arm, so look for that and then pick it up, and then start running around the map and looking for another mannequin. The second mannequin procedure is very similar in that you start the lockdown, you wait about 30 seconds, your team obviously have to all be there in order to start it in the first place, and then when it's done, you 
you'll see another arm drop down in the place where the mannequin used to be. And then when we move on to our third and final mannequin, things switch up a little bit because again, it's going to be the same deal of finding a mannequin by hearing or seeing it and holding square on it. But when we get to the end of the lockdown, this one will drop a head instead of an arm. You can potentially guess what's coming next if you've been paying attention to the map. Go to the APD and you should find a mannequin which mysteriously has a missing head and two missing arms. Hold square and you'll be able to place your newly acquired parts on this thing and then there's a little bit of story info that the game gives you. So we need to find the elemental ball. This will be hiding somewhere around the map. It's kind of similar to trying to find Gersh in Garod Krovi. You're going to want to listen out for it and also look for a blue glow. Obviously I've found it in my game here. It can be downstairs in the bunker or upstairs in the houses behind a barrier, something like that. It tends to be just out of sight, just out of reach in the map. And what you need to do is go over to it and just basically walk near it in order to set it off moving. The ball is going to wander all over around the map and you need to just escort it the whole time. Then eventually it's going to slowly but surely make its way to Peter McCain, who we've just met, that mannequin, and go inside him. With all that stuff out of the way and Peter McCain blasting off into outer space, it's time to go and access Rushmore once more. Then with Rushmore accessed, we're going to go back down to the APD base area and down there you'll find that you can initiate an APD sequence with these green terminals. Before before we jump into this, I want you guys to make sure that you've got as many perks as you're going to be getting in your game. You've built yourself a shield. I've got a guide for that in the description down below. That you've tried to get monkeys out of the box as well because they're really useful. And also I recommend getting galvers too because they're pretty helpful getting out of a tight situation for the boss fight too. Packer punching is also highly recommended here because you're not going to have a lot of opportunities to do that elsewhere in this game from this point. So once you're fully set up and ready to go, hold square with all your team to start that APD sequence and you'll then have mannequins rushing you in that downstairs APD area and you'll need to kill them near this soul box in order to fill it up. It's going to take a fair few souls to fill but once it does so you'll want to go towards the door of the APD and just take a look at what's inside. With the boss fight underway the first thing you're going to want to do is head back to where we started that APD sequence initially and look at the four screens. You can see here that there are four locations being called out. We're going to head to those locations in order and by the way if you run to a location and you can't activate the canister don't worry you can backtrack on yourself it's not massively life or death here but only one of them is going to activate at a time the idea is we go to the area that's called out on the monitor we hold square on a soul canister and then we fill it with souls but while this is happening the avogadro is going to be chasing you around and trying to zap you what i recommend you do is try and make sure that you turn your back to the avogadro and therefore turn your shield to the avogadro when it's about to zap and absorb the charge that way rather than just taking the damage because as you go through this the Avogadro is going to do more and more damage and it's going to be pretty painful if you keep taking those shots. With the first soul box filled you need to evacuate that area as fast as possible. This is no laughing matter. The area is going to start zapping. It's going to be filled with electricity and if you don't leave you will die. So get out of there ASAP and head towards your next soul box. This is basically a case of rinsing and repeating except the Avogadro gets more and more scary. The second soul box again is going to need to be activated. Remember that. So head over to it, hold square, make sure you've got the right one, start filling that bad boy up. And then again, at the end, you'll also get a completion quote to let you know that you're finished with that soul box and ready to move on. It's that same completion quote that will warn you, by the way, about the electricity. With your third one done, you're going to want to start being very careful where you run in this area, because remember, you've got multiple points now which are filled with electricity and you don't want to accidentally try and get somewhere by running through a massive hall of charge. The fourth and final soul box needs to be filled up as well and once that is done and you've managed to successfully dodge the Avogadro, you're going to want to head back to the APD room. I would recommend running there straight away. The Avogadro will chase you, certainly in the way the game is right now. If they change this, then you can extend what I'm about to say to the full boss fight and it won't be an issue. When you get to the APD room, the Avogadro will come into the entrance, but then kind of stop. You need to melee the Avogadro. So this is why Galva Knuckles are so damn useful. They make meleeing really easy. Melee the Avogadro to knock it into a ball. And when it's in a ball, you're then going to be able to push it around by either continuing to melee it 
or by shooting it with your guns. This can be a little fiddly because it does get stuck in corners sometimes, but just keep spraying into it and it will kind of bounce off the corner and back into the middle of the room. And what you basically need to do is while dodging all the zombies that are here, use your undead mans, throw your monkey bombs, things like that, you need to shoot the Avogadro, having knifed it so that it's in a ball and is shootable, up towards the staircase where it originally came out of the APD. And once it gets to the base of that staircase, it will get sucked inside and well, voila, you've actually completed the Easter egg. There's a little bit of story stuff here that I won't spoil, but I have the videos on my channel if you want to check them out. They're linked in the description and I'll put them on screen at the end of the video as well. One thing that I want to mention just before I go is I obviously put a huge amount of work into creating this Easter egg guide for you guys, but I also put a huge amount of work into curating and designing a great war poster and t-shirt as you can see on screen right now. This is available for a limited time on waffles.ownage.com. You've got Monty, you've got the Shadow Man, it's really pulling together all the themes that are culminating in DLC 4's Great War and that are played with as well in the end cutscene for Alpha Omega. If you want to pick one up, waffles.ownage.com is the place for you to go. The link is in the description down below. I would love to send you guys some posters and celebrate the ending of the Ether story with you all. Other than that though, I've got nothing really else to say other than thank you so much for watching, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed, and I'll see you hopefully very soon in more Zombies videos such as the ones linked on the screen right now. Thank you guys, I'll see you next time, bye for now.